Galnet News Special, 31st of August 3307. Four years ago, Commander Highford fled from the Pleiades to Colonia to escape the mysterious Black Flight. His last message in a data call in the wreckage of his crashed Type 9 on Colonia 5 EA finally began broadcasting on 26th of August 3307. I don't know what's going to be left by the time you get this. I, I had to stop them from intercepting that last message, but, but please go to HIP 26176 and find that complex for the sake of everyone who was taken there by scum like me. Someone has to remember them. And we have to ensure that this sort of thing can never happen again. HIP 26176 at galactic coordinates 3 and 904.4375 mark negative 323.53125 mark negative 1431.84375 That message, recorded four years ago, finally gave researchers a pointer to Oaken Point Research Base, the place Commander Highford had worked and helped us to answer at least partially the long-standing questions about the secrecy surrounding the Thargoid invasion of 3303, about why Highford was running away, and about what the Black Flight had been tasked to do, and more importantly, by whom. Back in 3303, there were folk tales of a belligerent alien race called the Thargoids that had attacked humanity back in the 32nd century, but the details were missing from history books. No one was quite sure whether the Thargoids had been real or imaginary. They certainly weren't around anymore. But some folk, privileged folk, people who knew the Thargoids were real and that they were close and getting closer. They also believed that they could handle the threat secretly, without the majority of humanity ever finding out. Just who these privileged few were remains in doubt, but it seems that azimuth biochemicals, who had first encountered Thargoid near the Colsac Nebula in 3111, and who we now know had been working to develop weaponry using the alien technology they'd found there, and in the trapezium sector where the crew of their research vessel Hesperus had found an ancient Thargoid Guardian battle site were handling the research and development. The beautiful Oaken Point Research Station is on HIP 26176 on planet A5I. According to the logs that can still be downloaded, this was where, four years ago, in late 3302 or early 3303, Azimuth was working on what for them must have seen the ultimate weapon. The code name of the project was Seraph. Professor Thomas Dawn has left a voice record that describes this truly horrific experimental work. Azimuth had somehow managed to capture a Thargoid scout ship and was looking for ways to harness its power. A large number of experimental test subjects, humans, shipped in, in occupied escape pods, were brought to the facility, and those that appeared strongest had neural implants fitted. Dawn explains the plan with palpable excitement. My team recognised that we are on the threshold of something truly remarkable. While our competitors chase rumours and run lab tests on curious probes, we are working towards the first human-piloted Sargoid vessel. Of course, our research here will be the first of many such projects. This hostile race has plagued human space for hundreds of years. These creatures, so foreign, so fundamentally alien in every aspect, have sought to dominate us. 
The technology used in these attempts has been devastating. Our work will establish the first example of humanity harnessing Thargoid machines for its needs. Over time, we will continue to assimilate the aliens' technology until we have stripped everything we want. Then we shall lead the mission to wipe them out forever. And Dawn refers back to Commander John Jameson's sacrifice in delivering a deadly plague to the Thargoids something that only became public knowledge in 3304, when Jameson's crashed Cobra was found. The mycoid virus merely bought us time. Our true victory will be absolute. The research program involved plugging the human subjects into the Thargoid scout ship and using them to control the ship. For the very first test, the professor records... A1's vital signs were stable for 43 seconds, at which point there was a major electrical surge through the central nervous system. Both witnesses observed the subject suffer a violent seizure which ultimately proved fatal. The Thargoid vessel appeared unaffected. The fate of the first victim was repeated over and over again. The scientists trying to work out why their human subjects were being killed by the Thargoid scout. The professor recalls that it is unfortunate but they can't resolve their difficulties without further live tests. On the fourth day of these live tests, the professor reported some progress. I regret the D1's test ended poorly, but we received the information we needed. Subject D2's test used the recalibrated couplings. Her introduction to the Thargoid vessel proceeded smoothly, and as with A7, the hull's external frame responded visually. Dr. Pierce and Dr. Hamlin witnessing both reported D2 as responsive. 76 seconds into the test, the craft powered down once more. D2 departed the craft with help but standing, the sight of which inspired applause from the team on the ground. D2 is now in the infirmary, exhausted but physically unharmed. Her brief statement implied a connection with the vessel which proved emotionally difficult to process. Shortly after this test, subject D-2 disappeared. Professor Thorne muses about what might have happened to her. As only one ship, piloted by Commander Highford, has left the base, he notes that black flight operatives would track him down and destroy him and his ship. But Thorne had more important concerns. The research team finally achieved a human-controlled flight of a Thargoid vessel. There has been considerable progress in our work. After an initially unremarkable series of tests, Subject H-8 successfully interfaced with the Thargoid vessel. 93 seconds into the test, the craft moved approximately 18 feet from its docking props and hovered in place. The flight was stable, and accompanied by a gentle hum, I would describe the sound as subdued, as though the vessel had been brought to heel at last. The landing, 28 seconds later, was abrupt, but only superficial damage was sustained. H8 is unconscious, but stable, under the care of the medical team. Unfortunately for the professor, the Thargoid scout seems to be more than superficially damaged. Perhaps its power supply had been depleted, as it refused to respond at all in further experiments. Professor Dawn was forced to suspend testing until another ship could be captured. He sent Black Flight to System HIP 22460, where Thargoid activity appeared to be high. This was also the time at which that system, which had been freely accessible, now had a permit lock applied. Thorne mentions the first publicly reported contact with an alien vessel, 
by Commander D.P. Sayer in the Ares Dark Region XU-0 B-63, which was in January 3303. The recent report of a commander encountering a Sargoid vessel in the Pleiades is intriguing. I only hope this was not a singular event or some misunderstood data. Sargoid vessel scouting human space would significantly improve our chances of capturing one of their ships. In his final log, Dawn mentions his sponsor. The witch will not be pleased with the lack of tangible results, despite our initial progress. It's unclear who this witch is, but it seems that she's been giving the orders. Dawn signs off with a little prayer to the gods to assist in Project Seraph's research, which is so vital to save humanity. All Project Seraph needs is a little luck. I am not so proud as to withhold a prayer asking for that luck. Perhaps the gods will smile upon us. In the next episode, we will examine what's been discovered in HIP 22460, where the Black Flight was sent to capture a second Thargoid scout. Thank you.